This will be Starfleet Battles Cadet Scenario Number 2 Tutorial. You can get the Cadet booklet at StarfleetGames.com. Just go to Starfleet Battles, and on this page, there will be links where you can download the Cadet Training Manual. SSDs, counters, map, and some play aids. Now, Cadet Scenario Number Two is a basic ship maneuvering and shooting of drones, but this scenario adds damage. The objective is to destroy eight Klingon drones without taking internal damage. You are allowed to take damage to your shields but not internal damage. If you take internal damage, then you lose the scenario. This one does allow the use of photon torpedoes and firing those photons at the drones. So you have three phaser ones and a photon torpedo available. Actually, two photons. The firing arcs, again for the photons, are FA, and for the phaser number one is also FA. FA is left front and right front. There's a diagram here, right above shield number two. The arrow in the center of the diagram is to represent your ship facing forward. So left front is out the hex row, that would be out the number six shield, and out the number one shield, and in between right front is out the number one shield and out the number two shield and in between. So on the map, if you follow my mouse, FA would be out this hex row, out this hex row, and in between. So it's a 60 degree arc directly in front of the ship. left side is simple enough to understand. Anything you can fire with the number one shield, six, five, and number four shield. Right side can fire with the number one shield, the number two, three, and four shield. Again, we will not be using the energy allocation form for this scenario. We do have a photon torpedo table. You'll notice that photons are not able to be fired at range of zero and one. They can fire out to range 30. They do 8 damage. The drones in this scenario take 4 points to kill the drone, and if they hit the ship, they do 6 damage to the shield. The 2 hit rolls for the photons are 1 to 5 range 2, 1 to 4 range 3 and 4, 1 to 3 at range 5 to 8. The phasers, die rolls 1 to 6 on the left side, range across the top, and at that range, whatever you, you roll, is the amount of damage it does. So at range 5, if you roll a 3, you'll do 4 damage. At range 5, if you roll a 4, you do 3 damage, etc. There is a damage allocation chart which uses two dice, 2d6, so if damage penetrates the shields and there's not enough specific reinforcement or battery power to absorb the damage, if it does internal damage, you roll on this chart to determine what gets hit. Again, in this scenario, if any damage occurs internally, you lose the scenario. The ship will be set to speed 8, and the drones will also be speed 8, so that means the, the ship and drones will move every impulse. The basic sequence of play is energy allocation, speed determination, call of the impulses, end of turn. The impulses are impulse 1 through 8, 
and they get repeated every turn. The general breakdown of the sequence of play is movement, tractor, launch, transporter, and fire. The only thing we'll be using is maneuvering, damage from movement, fire, and resolution of damage by fire. And when, In this case it'll be removal of drones. So we really don't need the 8 impulse chart. We just need the DAC and the Federation ship. This is a website for random dice rolls. Okay, so there are eight drones on the map. Over here to the left, across the top, and over here on the right. So, first turn, first impulse, the feds and the drones will move. The Federation is going to turn to the left. place a turn marker every time you move. The Federation at speed 8 has a turn mode of 2, so between speeds 7 and 16 it has to move two times before it can turn again. If it was traveling from speed 1 to 6 it would have a turn mode of 1. And the drones all move. Every time the drones move, they will attempt to close the range to the Federation ship. That was first impulse. There's eight impulses a turn. So by the end of turn one, the Federation ship will have moved eight times. So it will reach this hex right here by the end of the turn. This drone will obviously come close enough to hit the Federation ship. and this drone will get really close. These two drones will not hit it in the first turn. So that was impulse one. Impulse two, everything moves again. Impulse 3, again everything moves. Impulse 4, again everything moves. Now here, the drone will close to range 1, but since it and the Fed are moving at the same time, if the Fed moves here, the drone won't be able to hit, so moving forward is not a good maneuver for the drone. It does have the choice of turning down, and again, the Fed could turn up, so it's the same situation for this drone. Normally there is a maneuver called a side slip where instead of turning you just simply side slip like that and the next move is either forward or you turn but in these scenarios side slips have not yet been introduced. So the drone has a choice either turn down or go forward. So we're just going to move it forward.
Now, the Federation could on this impulse fire, or hold its fire and try and outmaneuver the drone. These two will get within range to be shot the first turn. These two won't. So we're going to fire. So we will fire our FA, phaser one, that's phaser number one, at range one at the drone. And regardless of what we roll, we're going to do a minimum of four damage. So that's an automatic kill for the first drone. So I'm just going to put a little dot here to represent the left side phaser firing. So this drone gets removed. Next impulse, the Federation, having gone one, two, three, four on its turn mode of two, will turn. And move forward. And of course, all the drones move. So that's five impulses out of eight. It's gonna, the, everything's going to move three more times. So next impulse, move. So two impulses left to the turn. Next impulse. I have moved this drone directly in front. I'll get back to it in a moment. Now if the drone here moves forward, range will be three, but if it turns down, the range is two. So drones are always trying to close the distance, so it will turn down. Now we fired the FA phaser. That means we have the left side and the right side left. We have one impulse left to the turn. So what does a phaser one do at range two? Everything but a six will kill. So if we fire the right side phaser and it kills a drone, we can turn and we have the left side phaser available to kill this drone, or shoot at the drone at least. If, however, we fire the right side phaser 
and the drone lives, we will have to turn and we'll, we have the left side phaser to shoot the drone. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to fire the right side, phaser number three, which is a phaser one, at the drone at range two, everything but a six will kill the drone. And we get a roll of a one. So this drone is removed from play. So we do still have the right side phaser one still available. Or sorry, we have fired the FA phaser and the right side. We have the left side phaser still available. So next impulse, if we want that left side phaser to bear, we have to turn. Now this is the last impulse of turn one. Next turn the Fed will be able to move out to at least this row and all the drones will be able to reach at least to this hex. This one is eight away from that hex. These ones certainly are. So we have a, a drone at range five If we look at our chart, we have a 50% chance of hitting with a photon, which isn't that bad. So we will fire one photon at this drone, range 5, and we will fire our last phaser, the right side, or the left side one, sorry, at this drone at range 2. So again, at range 2, a 6 survives. So here is the phaser. We rolled a two. This drone is dead. Removed from play. And we are going to roll the photon. We want a roll of one, two, or three. And we got a roll of a one. This drone is dead. Okay, during energy allocation, we start arming the photon we just fired, and we fi arm the three phasers that we fired, and then we execute this second turn. Okay, again everything is speed 8. So where do we want to maneuver our ship? Well, if we just simply go straight, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, to this hex, let me move my side slip marker. place it here. This drone down here will not reach that hex, but it will reach the hex row and be almost there. This drone will reach, this drone will reach, and this drone will reach. So we have three phasers and a photon available. So we should be able to kill these three drones. So let's do the turn. So since we're so far away, we're just going to move the first four impulses all at once. One, two, three, four. And each one of these drones will move four. On this last movement, this drone will turn. I'll just place it here for now. And this drone as well will turn. So 
So that's four impulses. The fifth one. Okay, we will fire the left side, phaser one. So I'll do another mark here. At the drone in front of us, and at range one, it's an automatic kill. Remove the drone. That's the sixth impulse, two impulses left. So next impulse. Everything moves. Now, if we turn up, our FA phaser will fire with this hex row, and our right side phaser will be able to fire this one, and nothing will have fired at this drone. Since we only have one movement left, and we have a photon available, Let's fire the photon at range 2 at the drone directly in front of us. It's a 1 to 5 chance of hitting, so anything but a 6 will kill it. We will fire the FA phaser 1 at the drone range 2, and we'll even fire the right side phaser 1 at the, fa at the drone down here. So let's fire the photon first. So anything but a six. Boom. Drone is dead. Phaser, range two. At the drone. The FA phaser. Does a three. Range two is five damage. That drone is dead. And range three. The last phaser. And that one does six damage. That drone is dead. So by using our photons, we've managed to kill all eight drones within two turns. That's the end of scenario number two. Next we'll do scenario number three in the next video. Thanks for watching.